What's going on guys, today I'm going to be talking about Canon's raw burst mode and going in depth on the feature, how it works, how do you even enable it, is it any good in the field, how does it work in the field, and then obviously once you get it back into the digital dark room to edit the images, how does it work, is it confusing or is there any problems with that, because this is going to be an in-depth review of the raw burst mode, which is very similar to Sony's sony and olympus's pre-capture or pro capture i'm not entirely which one calls which because i've never owned them i've never used them but they do have this feature also so what i'm going to do is show you some images that were taken with this pre-capture mode right now which enable you to see just how versatile this mode can actually be in the field um i was at met and mia there was some swallows and what i was able to do is I was able to hold down the shutter a little bit. The bird then took off. I reacted a little bit too late, even on this. But what it enabled me to do was get this sequence of images. Now, obviously, you can see there is rolling shutter in some of these images. And that is expected in the electronic shutter mode. That's just what happens because the sensor can't keep up with it at 30 frames a second. Either way... I'm quite happy with some of the images I was able to get. Some of them aren't quite in focus, some of them quite noisy and stuff like that. But the actual sequence of images has quite a few really good ones like this, where you can't even notice that there is much rolling shutter in it. Although it is quite a noisy image, this is straight out of camera, has not been edited whatsoever. So to get an image like that, I would have never got that if I was sat there and just holding the shutter down because I wouldn't have reacted quick enough because this was only a f like three frames in. So because that's the third frame, I'd have already missed it had I been manually shooting with that, which is, you know, that's the thing about this feature. It allows you to capture moments that you may have missed otherwise. But how do you actually use the feature? How do you enable it on the back of the camera? Well, that's what I'm going to show you right now. So as you can see on the back of the camera, this is how you actually go and turn on the raw burst feature. So if you go into the first menu and you're in the red menu and you go across to option six on the Canon R7, go to raw burst mode and then enable it. That now allows you to have the pre-shooting on there and have the raw burst feature active. So pre-shooting, Obviously, you want to half press the shutter. And then it, when you fully press it, it will actually record those shots that are 0.5 seconds prior to the actual um, shots that you wanted to take. Well, as you can see in the viewfinder footage, we get this little bar on the left hand side that has lines in it. And basically what happens there is when you start taking or half pressing the shutter, you get white boxes. When you fully press the shutter, you get green boxes and then that starts taking pictures. And then the red is when you have stopped taking pictures and then you've got to wait for that buffer to clear before you can take any more photos. So this is where the problems begin sort of because if you're out in the field, and you enable the pre-burst mode, you take a few pictures of the uh, bird that you want, you've got the pre-burst mode on, you get it as it takes off, you start taking photos of it. Then what happens is you see another bird, and you decide, right, I want to take a picture of that bird. What I'll do is I'll just put my camera on the bird and I'll start taking photos. And then you get the message, busy. You can't take any photos whatsoever, until that buffer is cleared, meaning that you could miss the moment that this sort of mode was kind of designed for. It's meant to be a mode that allows you to take shots that you may have missed. And it does, but at the caveat of if you use this feature and you are then having to wait for the buffer to clear, you may miss some other action that may have been the moment you actually wanted to capture. Which is very frustrating because on the Sony A9 or the one of the Olympus cameras or whatever that has these Pro Capture features, especially on the Sony one, I know for a fact all they do is slow down the amount of shots that you can take. So it goes from 120 FPS down to 30 or 10 or whatever, depending on how many pictures you take. 
obviously in the way of you know i want to take a picture of this and then you move and you want to take a picture of something else the problem with that is if you then try and take those photos of the other thing you can't because your buffer is full meaning that you actually can't take those photos that you may have wanted to and that is a huge downside another downside is that you can't change out of the mode either so i can't go right i'm in raw raw burst mode i'm shooting i'm shooting right it's now buffering what i'll do is i'll click the button i'll make sure to come out of the raw burst mode and go back to normal continue shooting so that i can continue shooting once it's done no you can't you still have to wait for that buffer to clear to then be able to press a button or go into a menu to be able to then use that pre-capture mode or to get rid of the pre-capture mode to go back to normal shooting meaning that you may miss more and more shots because you're trying to figure out and change the modes and it won't let you another downside which i've already mentioned earlier on is it's electronic shutter only meaning that rolling shutter is a problem for cans like the s7 uh the air 6 mac 2 does have a bit of rolling shutter uh although it has a faster sensor the r8 as well another one that also suffers from rolling shutter i mean the thing is once we get to the newer mirrorless cameras like the air 5 mac 2 the air 3 currently it doesn't have rolling shutter as much because it's a stack sensor if it's a stack sensor or a global illuminated sensor or a global shutter then those cameras will not have the same problem meaning that they can then go on and do whatever they need in terms of having the bandwidth to be able to keep shooting and stuff like that but the faster the readout on the cameras the better it'll be in terms of rolling shutter and also the buffer clearing quicker another downside is that there is no way of changing the time frame that it takes for the pictures so you get 0.5 seconds before you actually activate the shutter and that is it there is nothing in between it doesn't allow you to say right i want 0.3 seconds or i want 0.2 seconds or i want 0.75 seconds for instance it's 0.5 and it is locked in that frame rate unfortunately another thing problem with the pro, bur pro burst mode or the raw burst mode is that it creates a separate file which because it's a separate file it means that you can't really view it in the same way as you view a normal picture on the back of the camera what i would normally do is i would go into the menu when it's a little bit quieter or whatever i'll look through the photos and i'd be able to click the button and zoom into it and have a look is it sharp is it out of focus what do i need to change to make it right but no you don't get that option in the raw burst mode because when you actually go into the file in the back of the camera it plays it like a slideshow and you click it and then you can go through each photo but you can't zoom into each photo which is a problem because out in the field sometimes you get the focusing wrong if you've got the focusing wrong and the pre-capture hasn't worked the way it's supposed to or you've not been able to get the focus in the right point and then all of your shots are out of focus you've then got i don't know 50 60 shots that you can even use maybe that are all in this raw burst format and it's frustrating because it also is just one file on the computer and if you plug your sd card into the computer like you take it out of the camera plug it into the computer you can't see the raw burst mark files either you have to use canon's eos utility to be able to download the photos that are shot in this raw burst mode so in the field there is a few issues like i said you the, the electronic shutter is a problem but it's not too bad it can be good and it can be bad depending on how fast the birds are moving and whatever else um just 0.5 seconds is limiting it doesn't allow enough customization in my mind to be able to take something that you really want and then actually be like right i'll make it less i'll make it more i don't want tons of shots before or i want more shots before i actually take the photo 
if you were able to customize that, it would enable people to sort of dial into their own reaction times almost. And that would enable you to get even more shots that you wouldn't have got otherwise. The buffer has to clear before you can take a photo or change the settings. After you've actually taken the shots with the raw burst mode, that's a big issue because all it does is make you you basically sat there and you can't do anything until it's cleared which is frustrating because if i was able to at least change the mode back to continuous shooting and then wait for the buffer to clear and once it's cleared it then changes the mode over that would be a much better implementation but at this point you can't change the mode you can't take any more photos ideally i would like to just be able to take more photos even if it was a slower frame rate that would be much better in my opinion because then when it does go quiet, I'll just let off the shuttle, let it clear, and do whatever. So, how is it in the digital data room? Once you get it home, once you get home from your shooting, and you plug it into the computer, what is it like? Well, for one, as mentioned previously, you can't use a normal SD card just plugged into the computer with the card reader to be able to utilize this raw burst mode. You can't see those files unless you use the EOS utility download files. If you use the EOS utility, then you'll be able to get all the files off. Same with the MP4s, stuff like that. I've found you have to actually use the EOS utility to be able to view those. Either way, it's not a problem. It just means I've got to use another piece of software on the computer to be able to open these files up to then view them. Again, though, once you have them, in your files you can't just go from the eos utility and then put them straight in lightroom because if you look at this we are actually in digital photo professional which is what i would recommend you use for the raw burst mode you have to use it essentially it's not the best but it is what it is if i just click this photo as you can see all it does is open this one picture now, this was taken out of a bedroom window um, of a crow going by. But the point is, if I open that, even though it has this raw burst mode th icon here, what it doesn't do is open it as the burst. It opens the one thumbnail shot that you can see here. Same with this one. So, to actually view the raw burst mode, you actually have to go into here, into tools, and then go into step raw burst image 2 once you open that you can see i now have 1 to 44 frames of this so you can see we've got all these frames of this bird it comes in it lands and then i let off the shutter so we've got all these frames here of it coming in to land cool pretty cool feature it it works really well in terms of just being able to get photos that you wouldn't normally be able to like getting the exact moment this bird lands on the perch like that you know that kind of thing it's really cool for that sort of thing the problem is if i only want to keep i don't know let's get rid of six and then keep I don't know, 21. If I then go and save ex specified range and save separately, what I thought that would do was it would actually export it as the file. And what I thought it would do is it would actually put each separate file as a separate image in a folder or side by side in the file named one two three four whatever numbers we need but no what it actually does if i go into raw burst mode again it's just given me the range that i saved one to 16. that's all it's done it's not given me any actual jpeg or raw files to actually be able to throw into lightroom or anything like that it's just given me a cr3 file which you can see here which is frustrating because there's nothing I can do with that. If I put that into Lightroom, it would just give me a 5600 megabyte file. Like if I open this 
Uh, let's go into... So let's just go into this, right? The original burst file was 785 meg. The one I've created, or the, yeah, the one I've created is 284. But it doesn't give me any option. If I open that, all it does is open the JPEG. If I go to the next one, it just gives me a completely different image. So you can see that that is a problem. This sequence of images I showed you earlier was all one file and it was like 1.5 gig. But what I've had to do is you have to go into these files, you have to go into raw burst image tool mode, and you have to save each one as a separate file. Meaning if you were to go out with raw burst mode on all day long, and you took, I don't know, the best part of a thousand images, or even higher than that, because 30 frames per second on the i7 or whatever, you could easily get 3,000 pictures in a day with the raw burst mode. Imagine how long that would take you to actually go through and export all the frames that you want. There is no bulk export. The only way to do a bulk export is to go into this and manually export each one by one. Or to go into the Camera Connect app from Canon and go into the raw burst mode file from the, the camera via your phone and select each image that you want to keep manually on your phone, then download them to your phone. To me, that's a huge downside because the workflow becomes so much longer than it needs to be. And don't get me wrong, I love the fact that I can just aim at a wall and as you can see by what's going on here aimed at the wall you can see there's a little bird at the bottom there and I managed to get it where it's like flying and doing other things as well in different shots but the fact of the matter is you see that there? There you go. You've got a little bit of a flight shot that I wouldn't have captured otherwise because I wouldn't have even been able to focus on it properly. But the problem is, you've got all these files and if you hold it down long enough, you end up with this massive amount of completely useless images. I mean, this, one, this sequence has got four... 48 images in and it was just to show you guys on the back of the camera what the raw burst mode looks like But if I wanted to go and edit any of those I would have to go in manually export them and Then once I've manually exported them all I would then have to go through and edit them all and sort the sort through them all and whatever else To me the best way for them to implement it, it, it Would have been exactly what Sony did which was dump all the raw burst mode images onto your SD card. They could have dumped it in a separate file on the SD card. I don't care. I really don't mind if they did that. Each raw burst was a separate file on the SD card. That would make it easier. But in the current way it's set up, it's long-winded, it takes far too long to go through the images, and it means that a lot of people won't use this mode, even though it is such a good mode to have, because you've got the nuances of trying to get it on the computer and get it working so you can actually use the images and export them all separately. And then you've also got the other problem of, in the field, once you've started hitting that buffer, you can't take any more pictures. So you may just miss out on the perfect image that you wanted, that this mode is really designed to help you get. And that's the real big downside because it would be so good to be able to use this mode and then just be able to continuously shoot as well. That would be the perfect implementation, especially if the buffer allowed you to change settings while you're in the buffer, it allowed you to change settings, it allowed you to change um, the mode and all the rest of it. 
that'll be fine. But in its current implementation in the field, you can't do anything until that buffer is cleared. And that is just such a big downside. Anyway, guys, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. But if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. If you've got any more questions about this raw burst mode, leave them down in the comments section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.